Hi, and thanks so much for joining me. Today we are talking about the first impressions and a little demo on the curator tool from Hourglass as well as the primer that goes with it, the Ascent Primer, and then the mascara, the Realist Mascara. And you will see my first impression, which I taped a couple days ago, uh, and then I'm taping the intro and outro a couple of days later. I am wearing it right now again. This is probably my third application of it, something like that. And the results, I'm just gonna tell you right now off the bat, are results I've never seen before. The wispiness of the lashes is really impressive, um, but I'll show you again how this went for me the first time and there's a little bit of some learning that goes along with this but if you'd like to see how that first impression went please keep watching so i have the curator here watched the video a couple times this morning i'm going to take the ascent primer and i'm going to go ahead and just take the wand out this is what the wand looks like up close they say it's cut at a 40 degree angle which allows you to coat every lash without becoming clumpy. I'm going to take the tool and put it in the primer. And then here's what it looks like when you take it out for the first time. Just one dip in there. You can see the primer on the tool. It's pretty weighty in terms of the feel. So I'm just going to go in and they say to go in zigzag motions starting from the bottom part of your lashes and just make zigzag motions. And you're also able to reach these little inside hairs I'm noticing because it's so narrow. And then sometimes I have trouble with the outside lashes as well. And it seems to grab those pretty nicely. Then it says to go in upward. Oh gosh, this looks like it could be dangerous. So, especially if you're clumsy like me, I can see myself stabbing myself in the eye if I try and do this too quickly. So I've got to be really careful and calculating about it so I don't hurt myself. So the upward motion thing doesn't really work as well for me. It's a little bit scarier. <laughs> But the zigzag motion seems to work, and then you can do that on the bottom lashes as well. Well, it is definitely easy to get in there with this little tiny wand. Especially these guys right here, sometimes they're really hard to grab. But this tool seems to be reaching all of them, so that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna apply it to my other eye. All right, so I had the primer on my eyes, as you can see. I was trying to figure out either by directions or the video if you're supposed to clean this in between primer and then the actual mascara. I wasn't able to find it, but then I think if you leave the primer on there, you're probably gonna introduce the primer into the mascara, which I don't know if that's a good thing. So I'm gonna just wipe it clean. Now that didn't totally remove all of the primer, but it's ready to go for the mascara right now. So we're gonna put it, we're gonna insert it in the Realist Mascara. So I don't know if it's the sheer time it took me to kind of clean and change and all that, but I think the primer's dried a little, so I don't know if you're supposed to let it dry and then go in or just go in. So either way, it's almost dry already, so we'll see how this goes. You're supposed to be able to tight line too, so I am accidentally tight lining. <laughs> I'm not meaning to, but it's definitely if you start at the base of your lashes, you are going to end up tight lining. Now it's interesting because I'm wanting to go in there and thinking this tool is going to separate them a little bit better than they are. I don't know if it's because I let the primer dry in between, but they're kind of stuck together, some of them. And I really want them separated, especially with this tool. This tool makes me think it's gonna be able to separate them easily. Definitely able to grab those on the end really, again, easily with the wand. 
They have really teeny tiny lashes on the bottom. They're really wispy. See I'm trying to separate them because they're sticking to each other. Hmm. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. The right side is turning out better than the left side. I think it's because you've got to do more fast upward motions rather than, I think I was going too slowly. But talk about tight lighting, this thing tight lines really well, really well. But I'm getting clumps, why? Why is it clumpy? <sighs> okay. Uh, it's kind of clumpy and I don't know if it's user error. Like, did I do that? Cause <laughs> they look clumpy. So what I'm gonna do, because I really wanna know if this works, I take off my eye makeup and try it again. I really don't want to, but I really want to know if I did something wrong, because look at them. Do you think they look nice? I don't think they look nice. I'm going to try this again and see if it was my problem. And I hope it's not the product's problem because it's very expensive. It's the product's problem. So let's, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to take a, get a Bioderma, a little pad of Bioderma, take the makeup off and start over because I got to know. For okay. I'm back again. Um, Okay, the reason I wanted to try again is because in my experience with Hourglass products, they have not failed me. So I am just hoping it's me doing it wrong and not the product because I would be shocked if they released something that didn't really work. So we're gonna try it again. I think I'm gonna try and do the primer faster because I think when it dried, it got a little chunky. So I'm gonna try and move faster. I'm gonna do one eye at a time, um, go from primer to mascara quickly and just to wipe the brush off in between. I have cleaned the brush. I had to go in with the big guns with the eye makeup remover, the uh, Bobbi Brown eye makeup remover is pretty amazing. So I went in with that and then I also cleaned the wand with, uh, let's see, soap and water and then I went in with the eye makeup remover and then I went in with soap and water again and then I went in with uh, alcohol. So it is clean even though I still see some stuff in there. I didn't want that to affect its um, its power. That makes sense. I didn't want stuff stuck in there so that it was catching on things. But that's as good as I could get, it and that was pretty thorough. So we're gonna go ahead and give this another try. Okay, I'm a little closer this time. I'm gonna try not to move my head so much because it's a little bit blurry. And move my mirror. It's a weird angle for me because I've got a look in the mirror on the left, but also make sure you guys can see. So I'm gonna do my best to stay still. So primer first. Zigzag motions. I'm not gonna put on as much this time and I'm gonna move faster. I don't know, maybe the zigzag thing isn't a good idea. Maybe just, okay. Let's just do the top first. We're going as fast as I can. Wipe it off. Mascara, quick strokes. Immediately, that's better. Still have some minor clumping. What is happening right here? Will you move? Okay, that's definitely better. Okay, better, right? Oh. Okay, I think that first round I just took too long. However, now that I have to go into the primer again, that means I have to clean the thing, right? Because if you leave the mascara on there, you're gonna get the mascara in the primer and that's yucky. I don't like that. Well, maybe the, mas maybe the primer just turns gray after time, I don't know. I like how it's like, maybe you need two of these. Maybe that's what I need. We'll see how it goes. If I love it that much, I will get two of these, one for primer and one for mascara, because 
the cleaning in between is kind of, I don't know. I definitely wouldn't have time to do, to do this every day, but if it's a for a special occasion or a very specific look, I would do it. Okay, primer on. Okay, yes, definitely better. Way more wispy. It was a little chunky that last time because I think the primer had dried and I think I was talking too much as I was putting it on, so don't, don't put too much primer because it's gonna end up laying down a chunkier base. I'm just going in and tight lining with it. I thought that was kind of neat. What do you think? Okay, now we've got to do the other eye, but <laughs> going with the other eye means I've got to prime it again. I really wonder if you could use another primer with this. Should we try? I want to try because I love how the mascara is applied, but the fact that I keep having to change it out I don't know if it says you're not supposed to, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, so I did go in with the other primer that I typically use, which is the Dior Show. It's the Dior Show Maximizer 3D. Um, and I put it on this eye and then I followed up with the mascara. As you can see, there's definitely a difference in the way that they look. Get that light on. There's a difference in the way the lashes turned out. These are way more wispy. Um, and this is more of a typical application. You can see they're much longer on this side, or at least I can tell they're much longer on this side, and this side is a little bit shorter. I mean, it still turned out nice, but it's definitely a very unique um, result when you use the both of them together. So, kind of take a look at it from a further distance and give you my final thoughts on how this all went with the Hourglass Curator. Okay, just to recap and to go over a couple of things that I've learned since that first impression a couple of days ago is that if you go ahead and apply it with the wiggling motion, I know I had trouble with it, but if you wiggle at the bottom of your bases and that bottom of your base, if you wiggle it at the base of your lashes and then scoop up, wiggle and scoop, that'll deposit more product at the base and then disperse really evenly the product at the end of the lashes because it's okay to have it a little bit thicker at the bottom because that's where your lash line is that it makes your lashes appear thicker but then at the ends you definitely don't want it to be clumpy so whip it through the lashes pretty quickly after you wiggle it at the base so that's one thing that i've learned Another thing that I've learned is that I was having trouble separating the lashes, but what I discovered is if you take the curator tool and then you clean it, and then you go through your lashes with this tool dry, then it does separate them really nicely and it can also get rid of some clumps. So that's another way you can go in after you apply just to clean up a little bit. And then another thing that I've discovered is that these cotton pads, I use them for the cleaning of the curator to get into the little grooves. So this works really well. It's lint free and it gets in there really well. Another thing that you could try is flannel cloth because it has a little bit of texture to it. It'll get in those grooves as well to clean. So I hope those things help you. Like I said, I did consider maybe buying another one of these so I can have one in the mascara, one in the primer so they're ready to go and I don't have to clean them in between. Although I have to say, after trying this a couple more times after that first impression, it wasn't as bad switching back and forth. It's definitely not convenient, but it's doable. So I'm gonna keep using this product. I think I might wait to see how well I master this until I get another one. It is definitely a learning curve, something you're going to have to practice at. Already over the last couple of days, I've gotten better at it myself. So I will let you know in about a month's time how it's continued to work for me. I can tell you though that it is long wearing. I took a nap after that first impression. I put my head down for a little bit and when I woke up, and there was no transfer. So it doesn't transfer in terms of uh, being in the tight line or the mascara itself. So it is definitely long wearing. I use the Bobbi Brown eye makeup remover to remove it and it was pretty easy. Um, I had a little bit of a harder time with it's a, just a micellar water. So definitely invest in a good eye makeup remover so you're not damaging your lashes or tugging too hard at your eyes as you remove this product. So if you found this helpful, if you were just entertained or if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you to those of you who have already subscribed. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.